Hi, I'm Raven. And I'm Adam. And we're getting married. Finally! <laughs> impression of Adam. I thought he was of course handsome, but he was a lot of fun and there was something about him that drew me to him. Adam showed up tonight and I was really excited because I met Adam in Dallas during our two-week hiatus from the show and I really liked him. Raven and I, we met last week when the show got put on hold and then, you know, we, we went out and we talked for a little bit and like we connected well. When I first arrived at Paradise, there was a couple girls that I was intrigued by and I wanted to get to know a little bit more. And so I remember sitting down talking to her and one of the things I asked was, I said, well, if I were to give you this date card, would you go on a date with me? She, you know, basically in a nice way was like, yes, I'd go on a date with you. And I knew what the date card was and I knew what the date was. And from what I was told from producers, everyone was like, you may think we're crazy, but I think you would mesh really well with Raven. But you have to just trust us. Just try it and see how it works out. And so we went on a like a salsa dancing date in Paradise. I had high hopes coming to Paradise because I wanted to meet somebody. I went in this thing with an open mind, and I just said to myself, like, anything's possible. But at the same time, like, if something comes to fruition, like, I'm willing to go all in. Right. I'm willing to do it. I think for Adam and I, we were so upfront and honest with each other. On our first date, this did not get aired, but we told each other, okay, real life starts after the show. So we actually say our anniversary is the day after the cameras went away. And we were like, okay, what do we do now? And we were really honest with each other and we never got caught up in the dates of the show, but more, what are you like outside of this paradise? Because anybody can fall in love in paradise, but it's, can, can you be there for each other during a pandemic when you're supposed to get married three times? <laughs> yeah. I'm excited to start my relationship with Adam outside of paradise. I guess you can say I'm off the market now because Raven is now my girlfriend. And then after the show, when we continued to, or when we decided we were gonna continue to date, I met him here in Dallas, and he had on his suit from work. He pulled up and picked me up, he was a gentleman. His house was immaculately clean, and I was just like, oh wow, this guy has really got his stuff together. Like, he means business, and it was totally different than what I thought he was like on Paradise. Like you think about it, there's 300 million people in the United States, right? And the fact that we got casted to go on a show, we wanted to go and the byproduct of the show is to find love, right? So you go on and you want to have a good time and like if you find love, great. If you don't, you know, at least you tried, right? But it's the fact that like we got there from two different backgrounds, two different parts of the country, right? And we came together on in one place <laughs> and we made it work. One thing we talked about was we got to the point in the relationship where like, okay, we have to live together. We were living in two different states where I was like, well, Raven, do you want to come to Dallas? Is this something you want to do? And she said, yes. And so logistically, you know, she had time to make sure to move all of her storefront from Arkansas to here. And then at that time, I thought it was more of a loose joke, but Raven was serious about it. She's like, if I move here, you have one year to propose. Here's the thing, I was leaving my family, my friends, my home, my business. I moved my whole business here, and I said, listen, buddy, if I'm giving up all this, you have a year, okay? That's all. <laughs> and so I took that with a grain of salt, by the way, <laughs> and... Um, and I, let's be honest, if it, if it wasn't gonna be a year, I, would, I wouldn't have left him. <laughs> I would have <laughs> stayed in it. <laughs> January 2019, you were here. Yeah. And then when it proposed May, May. of 2019? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We did a photo shoot here in Dallas. So Raven thought it was for her clothing line. And then I had videographers, photographers, you know, on the bottom of the W Hotel, which has a helicopter pad on the top in downtown. 
And so we were taking pictures that day and then one of the pictures Raven was gonna spin around and then I just drop on a knee and I have the ring right there. When he got down on one knee, I got down on one knee because I was like <laughs> weak in the knees. I was like, oh my gosh. And he was like, no, 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 stand up, stand up. So when he opened the ring box, I don't even know what he said because all I saw was this blinding light coming from this ring box and it was just <laughs> so beautiful and so perfect. We were originally supposed to get married May 30th, 2020, and then as everyone knows, Corona happened. So we were really hopeful. We thought, okay, we'll just be on lockdown for a couple of weeks, maybe a few months, so let's push this back to July. Then that didn't happen. Then we were like, okay, December, and then that didn't happen. And we just said, it's April 16th, it's do or die, Till death do us part on April 16th and we're doing it. And the theme word I think is finally, that it's finally happening. The first big change that when it came to wedding planning was the guest count. That's probably yeah. the biggest thing. That was something we were very cognizant of and we wanted to not only make it like a safe environment for our officiant, but also all the guests as well. Yes, so we started out with 450 invites and then we cut the guest count only to our immediate family, which is 20 people. So it was a big shift, and like Adam was saying, it was a trickle-down effect. So that affected everything from the food, to the location, to the band. the band, everything changed. I knew people expected us to mention The Bachelor. I mean, that's how we met each other. Yeah. That's why we are getting married on that day. So um, a lot of our friends from The Bachelor, a lot of producers were gonna be there as well. And so we were going to have our cocktail hour completely dedicated to The Bachelor. And we were gonna have a huge rosé wall that said, will you accept this rosé? But obviously with 20 people, that doesn't make sense. And with COVID, that didn't make sense to have a huge champagne wall. So maybe on our one year anniversary, we can do that again. When our uh, first date passed, we actually had a photo shoot at the house to celebrate the day that it was supposed to be something special. And we have a little book in our living room of all the pictures of that day. And it was just a nice way to celebrate. Yeah, we were supposed to get married this day, but you know what, life is good. And we know our children are gonna look back at those pictures and say, okay, mom and dad went through some things, but they made it through and they had each other. dress on I just feel like this is what a bride feels like because a lot of COVID brides don't feel like brides until they get the dress on and they're like oh yeah I, okay I'm, I am gonna get married it, it will be fine but having the dress on plus the veil I feel like this is really going to hang in my closet forever my daughter might wear the dress or recreate it. I just feel like it's a piece of me, it's a piece of our journey, and oh, the story she could tell because she's been hanging in my closet for a year. <laughs> if dresses could talk, she would say a lot. I am wearing shoes that I was given on The Bachelor. So when I was on Nick's season, I was gifted from The Bachelor. So my shoes are my something old. My something new and something borrowed is jewelry. So the earrings I'm wearing right now are the same designer that I'm gonna be wearing with my jewelry. And it's called St. Helena Jewelry. And it's old classic timely pieces. And then my something blue is going to be a little garter that I'll be wearing um, at the ceremony. The dress that I'm wearing is so picture perfect. It's a princess dress. It has a lot of layers of tulle and a very structured bust. 
And when I tried this dress on at Waters Bridal, my mom and I both cried because we saw this dress as the dress I was going to dance with my dad in. Even thinking about it, it makes me cry, but my dad had been diagnosed with lung cancer a few years ago, and we were given three months for him to live. And so I just didn't think I would ever get to dance with my dad. And so when I put the dress on, and then the moment they put the veil on, it was like, oh, this is so special. This is, if I were to dream of being at my wedding, dancing the father-daughter dance with my dad, this would be the dress. We are originally gonna get married at Adam's mom's temple, but it is closed. So we had to look at different venues and everything was filling up because all of the 2020 brides were moving into 2021. So we toured a few places and they were all good. But then our wedding planner, Whitney, was like, let me show you one more place. And she took us to the Alana. And when I say my breath was taken away, I did not know in my wildest dreams that something could be so beautiful. I'm really excited to just have our close family there where in a big wedding setting, you know, people have told us five or 10 years after they get married, they only talk to maybe 15 or 20 of those people anyways, right? <laughs> so we wanted just to incorporate our people, our family, and just make it an incredible day. And then that way we can look back at it and say, look, you know, we did it. And this is how we were able to navigate through. A lot of our guests already are vaccinated. We are doing COVID testing and it has to be 24 hours before. And then someone will be at the door taking temperatures. Since we are an interfaith couple, we decided collectively to have a Jewish wedding. So we are having a pretty traditional Jewish wedding and we're saying our own vows. Every married couple told us get premarital counseling. So we did that and we have a lot of trust in our rabbi <laughs> and he knows us very well at this point, yep. especially during the pandemic. And it's gonna be just a beautiful celebration of us becoming one. It's gonna be very white, very timeless, and lots of flowers, very romantic. I want our wedding to be super meaningful with tradition and also very romantic. And I think he's gonna just fall to pieces and cry and just be an emotional wreck. <laughs> well, we'll both, I will for sure. Yeah, I will for sure. Raven, yeah. Raven will too, but I think the only thing that will hold her back is the fact her face is filled with makeup. So she's like, I can't mess it up. Me, it's just gonna just, it, it'll pour, but I'll, you know what? You gotta yeah. embrace it. He could barely hold it together when he proposed. So I think he's <laughs> gonna have a really hard time during the wedding, but I'm I'm gonna fully embrace that. I love that. It shows me he's, he really does love me. <laughs> Look at him tearing stop, up already. Stop it, stop it. <laughs> After the ceremony, we are planning to go kind of right into like a short cocktail hour and, and then that way we'll finish you know pictures and then go into just a dinner. We're actually just gonna do like a unity table. So it's just one big rectangular table. Something pretty floral here in Dallas is doing our whole floral design for us. We just want it breathtaking because I feel like you have to do that at the Olana to really like encompass and bring everything together full circle. Then we're planning to do our own, our dance first, first dance, father, daughter, mother-son dance, and then kind of just finish the night on with dinner and the quartet kind of playing in the background and just something cool where everyone's just vibing out too. Our caterer is awesome, point blank. So they took a little bit about our backgrounds of a little bit of foods that we like, and then they twisted it, made it into a plate. So for example, one of the dishes is like blackened ahi tuna tacos you know, street tacos with a side of cheese grits. So we'd always have something that's very unique and like that's that's to our liking. Because we're having such a smaller guest count than what we originally had, we're saving a lot of money on the cake as well. Yeah. And it's gonna be a smaller cake, but Adam actually was the one who invented 
invented <laughs> the, filling. The, the filling of the cake. So we are a cake testing and he was like, you know what this needs? This is great, but this needs like a pistachio filling. And so <laughs> they went in the back, they whipped it up, and I'm telling you, I was shocked at how great that it made the, the cake taste. I don't think it was stalling the wedding a year was supposed to happen for a reason. I think that the reasoning and the lesson that's learned is the time together and what COVID's really created. I think it's just the fact that, A, we both have to navigate through this. You know, we have to figure out a date, commit to it and proceed. And then it's also just like creating time for each other. I'd say beyond the wedding part, I think it was really just more of just a lesson for us to just yeah. apply to real life situation. We grew as a couple. We realized what was important in our wedding. Had we had the big wedding, I think yeah. we might have regretted it. And I think we might have not been so into our vows and our promises to each other in front of our family and God. We would have more been um, obsessed with the details of the wedding than each other. Now, Raven has been, one thing that I've never really had, even previous relationships, is somebody who's wants to keep the relationship and wants to hold on to it because it's precious to them. And that's one thing Raven has really, really kind of instilled in our relationship. She's not only a great listener, she gives good advice when you know, you're know you down or you're feeling some type of way. And she has an incredible family. I think I'm most excited to spend my life with Adam because he makes every day better. Like every person in my life that he's been in contact with, including myself, he's made everything better. And he's made my parents' life better. He's made my friends' life better. He's definitely made my life better. My dad has always prayed that I would find somebody that was easy to love and him loving me was easy. Adam is exactly what everyone has been praying for for me. Mm -hmm.